think that's a perfect uh, point to stop that video. Absolutely heartwarming performance. Uh, and let's call on the man that gave us such a great thrill in Minsk a couple of weeks ago. Put your hands together for Ireland's world champion, Martin Irvine. Sweating. Oh, what an amazing uh, performance that is. Okay, before we get going with the question and answers, we've got a uh, little bit of an announcement to make. Uh, some great news for Irish Cycling. They've completed another uh, uh, supply deal, another sponsorship deal. They Basically, I can announce that Spin11, which is an Irish company, will be supplying Cycling Ireland with all its clothing equipment for the next season, which is great news. Please put your hands together for uh, Cycling Ireland and Spin11. And uh, our, our model, Martin Irvine, is uh, modelling the uh, Spin 11 Irish Cycling Show jersey. And I think, are you ready for the big reveal? Because he's got another Spin 11 jersey on underneath. The World Championship stripes. Now it's possible to buy them in shops, but uh, the real one, well that takes an awful lot of earning. Okay, so I'm going to uh, call on a couple of uh, representatives. I'd like to call Rory Wiley, who's the president of Cycling Ireland, to come up and get his photograph taken. And, uh, and we also have Philip Cassidy from Spin11. Philip, you might uh, come and join us for a couple of words. Philip, uh, no me performer in cycling yourself over the years. Uh, how important is it for you and for Spin11 to be involved with Cycling Ireland? Well, I suppose uh, we started Spin11 11 10 years ago on the back of, you know, our, our mantra was always quality service, quality product, quality people. And we've worked for the last 10 years, been very successful, uh, worked with a lot of different teams. Um, we went into negotiations with Cycling Ireland this year and thankfully we, we've come together and we're hopefully going to do a good job. I think, I think it's everybody's interest to do a good job. But the ice is on the cake, you know, like it's uh, a cycle for years and tried to win what I could have done modest, modest, modest domestic race. But to, to be world champion was always a dream. But for a stand to get such a nice, grounded guy like Mark, and the excitement the was when he came in, all the hard work he put in, and to go and win this world title is just incredible. And it's, it's 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 just you know, words can't describe the the, the, the magnitude of success and the effort that he put in to do what he did. And of course, for Spin Eleven, it's it's it's, it's icing on the cake to have the association with with, with with world championship jersey. You know, it's it's like any any manufacturer, any any product. And we're really looking forward to, to producing quality product for Mark. Well, that's uh, great to hear, and it's fantastic that an Irish company is able to support Cycling Ireland at this time, and I think it's a sign of just how, uh, how much that cycling is growing like Topsy in, uh, in Ireland, and indeed around the world at the moment. Okay, well, that's uh, great to announce that. Uh, I think we'd move on to the Q&A session, so I'd like to say thanks to uh, Phil and to Rory uh, for that, and uh, Martin, you'll stay with me for a bit of a chat. Hello? No. Two, two, one, two. Uh, it's been a whirlwind for the last couple of weeks. Have you known anything like it? Yeah, this is random. Um, it's, I didn't expect this to happen when I've been off training and doing what I do. And it's uh, You never planned for winning? The, I, yeah, it's kind of, I've got used to losing for so long, you know, I think, I think anybody in cycling gets used to hammering themselves, getting nothing out of it. And then you always dream for the, that day, but uh, it came around pretty quick. Well, I've heard you say since then that um, you know you got used to losing and you never expected, and it was just disbelief. But there must have been some sort of self-knowledge in those last ten laps, and particularly when the Austrian guy came up on your shoulder in the last couple of laps. Um, I'd like to say I planned it and thought about it, but I didn't really. Um, it was just instinct, I suppose, or I do. I, I race that way, aggressive. You know, I'm not fast. Um, I'm going to get beat if a sprinter comes up or. So I just, I knew, I thought it was an all, you know, I did actually think it was going nowhere because I had the pursuit in my legs and I thought I might as well try something, but there's a lot of small things in the race made it happen, you know, the, the back markers, I was picking them up so they kept my speed up. A lot of small things happened to make give me that result, so it was great. But the group behind was absolutely shattered. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a bunch coming up, was it? Yeah, I mean, even the whole effort, I was kind of telling myself there's like 20 guys just queuing up behind me to come and sprint around me. So, and then when I seen a wheel, I seen a wheel on on my wheel, and I thought that was it. But it was only like two or three laps to go, so I said at least I'll do a good lead out if I do anything. But then uh, I was just strong. Yeah. 
you told me a statistic the other day that uh, I think I, I'm right in representing it that your last 10 laps, so your last two and a half kilometers, was on 418, 420 pace. Yeah, that's someone worked that out through lap times or splits, and that's what they told me, which is quicker than my qualifying time in the pursuit, which kind of puts it into perspective that it was when you have a character uh, this thing, um, you really dig a bit deeper. It, it's it's there's so much in the head that we, we yeah. don't realize that we can get out. Did that's, you just that's the limiting factor right there. Um, yeah, and I think I've had years of telling myself I'm useless and uh, just thinking for the better days. And I think uh, that was one of them. So you just got a little bit of self knowledge on that yeah. day? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just confidence. Well, not confidence, just maybe it is belief in your training and stuff and telling yourself you're doing the right things yeah. and uh, just keep doing it. And it took me a few years to kind of get good at it, but it's uh, finally helped. So tell us about your mindset going into the, the scratch race because you're coming off the uh, pursuit. Yeah. We can talk about that in a minute. Coming off a, a medal ceremony. It wasn't exactly ideal preparation, was it? No, I mean, I literally had. I think 30 minutes to get my numbers on and, and then I was up sitting at the podium and then at 10 or 50 minutes to stop sweat beside the podium and then I was back up again so even the Australian uh, Hepburn he thought I was a madman you know he's like what are you doing like but um, it, uh, it worked out well I looked I looked like I did the right thing you know but people think I was sandbagging in the pursuit final and I wasn't really. I went out. Was it in your head at all in the pursuit final? No, I mean, I've never started a race to go easy in it, you know, and I wasn't going to start doing that, so I kind of went in, I geared up thinking, I was trying to scare him, you know, you never know what happens. But uh, I just blew up after a K and just, I probably could have went, you know, I was committed, but, you know, I knew that I knew it was getting caught nearly, so I just kind of tried my best for the first half and then I just accepted it in the second half. Well, it was already a massively successful uh, world championship this, from this the Irish. Thing, people are like, from the scratch race, the scratch race, the, what, the pursuit was my, was I was training for, like, the, my podium in the pursuit, 420, it was my goal, like, and Prime. I ticked it. And then this thing was just the cherry on top. I, I couldn't, uh, you couldn't have planned it. So was pursuit qualifying for you um, the real? That was it. Self-affirming. Yeah, that was like, achievement. Yeah. I'm, I'm decent. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, and it was good. That my, I mean, it's exactly my goal to do a 420 and then a podium, and that got that. So that was me happy. You know. Right. And then into uh, into the final mm. and everything beyond it. What's it been like for the last few years? We've heard so much about. Um, the struggles you've had. You've had a lot of support from people in Ireland, yeah. but it, it, it is a struggle, right? Yeah, I mean, people, the way it's put out there, I'm struggling and it's all on the bottom of the barrel. I mean, I have, there is, it's limited funding, but, you know, I have what I need to do, and it's down to me to do it with what I've got. You know, obviously you'd like more of the big things and all these fancy things, but I have what I need to do what I'm doing, and uh, it's... You know, you need to love the sport to be doing it, I suppose, because there's lots of quiet times. People forget it. You train, you know, 100 days to race one. Well, I do anyway on the track. You know, you train a lot to race a handful of days, and you really, your head's your worst enemy in that kind of scenario. But um, days, like, even Glasgow was a, you know, changed my mindset when I went and got a medal there, and it was like, I can't compete. So that's, you just need, something to keep you motivated, targets. In the last few years, obviously, Majorca has been your... Mm. your I take it if, if, uh, if Cycling Ireland get that in Velodrome in Ireland, that's a disaster for you because it means you don't have to go to Majorca anymore. I'm sure you can figure out a way to get back to Palma, like, I'm sure. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I've been trying to push the Velodrome in Ireland thing because I'm, I'm an old guy now, I've missed that boat. But if, for the kids around, it, it's... It's an awesome thing, you know, when you get on the track, it's such a buzz, you just want to keep doing it. And that's, if people had the chance to do that in Ireland, it would see thousands more cyclists racing. And I think that's where I kind of want to see, it's not, you know, it's not for me, it's for the next generation coming up. Because uh, when I'm in Majorca, you would see kids of seven, eight, ripping around, with serious skills on bikes, and uh, just because they have a track. Yeah. Right, and much. Uh, we were talking about BMX earlier, but th that also feeds into all it's the same types. grassroots. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen there's BMXers that would beat me over 100, 200 meters, like real sprinters. You know, develop this kind of fast twitch and cycling, cycling. Like everybody, can, everybody does it. I just need that avenue to go down. Yeah. Right, right. So let's uh, let's go back a little bit in your in your background. We've heard yeah. an awful lot of talk uh, again in the last couple of weeks about breakfast rolls. I mean, when, when was the last time you had one of those? When was the last time what time? You had a breakfast roll? 
Re recently, pretty recently. Yeah. Um, I am the. I'm the. I don't do what I do. I'll tell you that because I'm a disaster with diet and eating what I like to eat. Um, but yeah, do your homework. Eat good food. Eat fruit and veg. Um, no, but yeah, it is. I just stumbled acro across cycling. I was like, just eating and drinking stuff. But. Uh, no family involvement, no? As in, the it's last like few years, no, was, my household was watching TV and eating chips and stuff. So I really broke the mold when I got out of it, like, um, I think they thought my head was cut the first year I went racing, the bike races, like, what are you, what are you doing, like, um, but yeah, it's, it's changed since then, a lot. Um, yeah, as I've said it before, I, did, I thought you, had, you only had so many heartbeats in a lifetime. So I didn't want to waste them, like running up the stairs or something. So I just like to move around. And, but that's definitely changed for the, for the better, yeah. I mean, you might have earned yourself a few extra heartbeats with the, mm, uh, the last yeah, the hard way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what, um, what now? I mean, a lot of talk about the road, but the track must uh, must also be very important to you now. Yeah, has, has it become more important again? Um, yes and no. I mean, the track's always going to be something I want to do well, be be the best at or do well at. It's uh, I spent so many years trying to get up to that level. You know, I've been in the track packing up bikes when guys are getting their medals and all, and for, for so long, it's nice to actually be that guy. So that's what I want to keep doing. Um, I have proves I can compete at the world level. I keep doing that. But obviously the road is what keeps me fit and gets me racing and gets me away around the world still. And it's something I have to, I want to be good at as well.